Hey everyone and welcome back. Um, today I want to do something more off the cuff uh, because I quite literally just received this phishing email here. And if I just switch over, you can see it on the screen. Um, and it's really interesting. I started digging into this and I'm like, I have to start recording because it's not often that I get a phishing email into my actual inbox without it getting caught up in spam filters or, uh, you know, just not delivered at all. But in this case, this email was delivered right to my inbox. And it's very interesting why. Because if you see here, well, who sent this email? Well, GitHub did. And we can dive into the email headers if we really wanted to. And we can see that, you know, it passed things like SPF and DKIM and DMARC. All of these authentication checks that we have with, you know, different email protocols. Because the email is actually coming from noreply.github.com. And if we start looking into the received headers and see where it actually came from, well, it actually came from GitHub servers. Because the attacker here is taking advantage of a built-in feature within GitHub. And that's the issue feature, right? So if you have a GitHub repository, which I have many, and this is just one of them, this ICS Fisher repository here, which surprisingly has no vulnerabilities in it because there's nothing, it's an empty repository. Um, so it seems like this attacker or whoever this was here is, you know, targeting different repositories across GitHub to try to get people to click on this link. And so what they basically did was create an issue under my GitHub repo and basically said that they've detected a security vulnerability in my specific repository. Right? And this is not all too uncommon to get an email for. Um, GitHub has a lot of like built-in automated checks that it does, different scans if you subscribe to them. And you can actually get security vulnerability alerts like this into your actual inbox sent from GitHub. In this case, the attacker is trying to impersonate this service by creating or pulling an issue on my GitHub account and putting this as the text of the issue. So basically this message, hey there, we've detected a security vulnerability in your repository. Right, and so... What's interesting here, right? We have a couple links. This is fine. This is an actual unsubscribe link from GitHub specifically for this issue. We can view it on GitHub. So if I click on this, interestingly enough, we get a 404. And, you know, typically if you get an email like this, you don't just want to start clicking on links. But I can see down the bottom left there that it is in fact going to github.com. This is, you know, actually sent by GitHub. It's just the attacker taking advantage of the issue feature here to put in their own link. And we can see it's going to https github-scanner.com. And where this starts to get more interesting, in my opinion, is when we start to look into this domain, right? And so if I head over to the Domain Tools website here and just do a very simple, basic lookup of that domain that we received, github-scanner.com, well, what do we find? If I click on search, what we're going to get, we're going to pull back all of the information related to this domain. Right, so we can see things like the registrar, right? So what actual organization or website did the attacker in this case use to register and pay for this domain? Well, you can see it's returning as Web Commerce Communications Limited. And we can look into this organization more if we really wanted to. All they are is just a domain registrar, right? We can see how, I guess, sketchy their practices are. Do they really, you know, check what their domains are being used for or registered for? Doesn't really matter in this case, the registrar. Uh, but the important thing I want to touch on here is the date. Right. And so often when we're dealing with phishing domains and URLs and uh, especially in a threat hunting context, we always want to look at the dates of the domains that we're interacting with. Right. Um, a very useful and common threat hunting practice. Uh, and I just say threat hunting because it's more proactive in this sense, is that you always want to, I guess, be very suspicious and somewhat quarantine or even just outright block emails or communications with any domains that have been registered in, say, the last 30 days. Right, because there's not too many legitimate reasons why you'd be contacting or visiting or accessing a domain that's been registered, you know, say in the past day or week. Uh, and in this case, well, this is today's date. So today I'm filming this. I'm going to post this on September 18th, right? And we can see that this domain, GitHubScanner.com, has been registered on this exact day. So probably within the past couple hours, this this uh, you know attacker registered the domain to sort of stage their phishing campaign and start sending out all of these, you know, GitHub issues, right? So that's the first thing that's really suspicious to me here. We can see it was registered today. Uh, we can look at the IP location of the actual website that's being hosted. We can get the IP address. And so what we can do is just copy this and head over to, you know, a malware lookup database or like a virus lookup database like VirusTotal, which we'll do in a second. Uh, we can see the IP location and the ASN number. In this case, this looks to just be some sort of cloud hosting service, right? So we have Global Data System Corporation. You know, not a big deal. This is kind of like if we saw something like AWS or Azure. But if we really wanted to, we can look into this IP address farther, right? So I can head over to virustotal.com, paste in that IP address, and see what we get. 
In this case, no big deal. We're not really getting uh, anything flagged here because again, the ASN number in this case seems to be some sort of cloud service provider, right? And so if we look into the history of this IP address, it was most likely assigned to some legitimate use case or website or application earlier in the process, right? Um, you know, cloud services are always rolling their IP addresses and assigning them out to different customers. And if I look up Global Data System IT Corporation, well, we can see, again, some sort of managed service company. Um, they might, you know, be offering IP addresses to spin things up or virtual private servers, that kind of thing. But another thing we can do with VirusTotal is to look up the domain itself, right? And see if it's been flagged in any different antivirus solutions, right? So any of these security vendors. That's going to be github-scanner.com. And we can see there at least two out of 94 security vendors flagged it as malicious. We have some spam indicators here, some malware indicators. So it seems like some of these guys have been, you know, very quick on the ball here and, uh, you know, identified this as some sort of phishing attempt. If we look under community, we can see potentially some other people uh, have flagged this as well, right? We can look at the details, different things that it's contacting. So some Cloudflare addresses, uh, we can get a fingerprint, um, you know, we can get the HTTPS certificate but I'm more interested in actually looking at what's being hosted here, right? So what I can do is head over to, you know, any site like urlscan.io. It doesn't matter what you use, but as long as you use a service that can actually query a URL for you, right? Maybe you can pull back things like images of what's being hosted. You can get different details like the actual makeup of the content itself, like the DOM or the HTML. And we can start to see if there are any known phishing signatures being hosted on here, right? Or anything malicious or potentially suspicious. Right. And so in this case, we can see where it's being hosted. Again, we can get this information. We can get Google safe browsing information. At this point in time, there's been no classification, which is all right. Um, but we can do our own sort of verdict here, right? Because we're not really getting anything with urlscan.io. We could look at other t tools or other sites, but what really interests me here is the screenshot that we get. We can see here some sort of reCAPTCHA uh, window, but it doesn't look legitimate, right? This is not the typical standard Google reCAPTCHA that you're gonna see on many legitimate websites. This appears to be some sort of, uh, you know, potential impersonation attempt of a reCAPTCHA. And pairing this with an already sketchy looking site or a, a sketchy seeming site, well, I really wanna dive into this. But I'm not gonna do it on my host machine. That would just be completely stupid. And so I have a virtual machine set up. I just log in here. Well, again, I have my virtual machine set up. I've navigated to the page. And we're ready to see what's actually being hosted or what's behind this guise of uh, GitHub scanning, right? And so let's head back here and I'm going to click again. I'm in a virtual machine. And so I'm going to detonate some malware here and actually uh, fall for this link as if, you know, someone might actually would if they just see the security notification in their email. So I'm going to click on I'm not a robot. And look at that. That's very interesting. So it looks like we're getting some verification steps. And I don't know about you, but I've never done a CAPTCHA or a recaptcha that required me to open up the Windows Start menu, press R or the Run key, pr press Control V. So, <laughs> wow, I want to see what is the source code of this page, and then press Enter. Right. So it's asking us to actually run a command, <laughs> legitimately run a command in our Windows machine, right? Which I'm not going to do. Again, I'm in a VM here. Let me just full screen so I don't accidentally hit anything. But I want to look at what it's doing, right? It must be because look, we're. <laughs> This is actually really interesting. Um, so we press the Windows button, right? That's gonna open up the start menu. In fact, yeah, I can demonstrate it. And so on my host here, if I press the Windows key and the R key at the same time, well, you can see it open up this little run menu here and it wants us to press control V now. Uh, and I'm assuming there's something on our clipboard that is gonna paste in here and then we're gonna click okay to immediately run whatever command that we just entered here. So this is very clever, honestly. I, I don't like this technique, this is scary. Um, because that's all it takes to fall for this. And now you're running a command on your host. So the attacker is getting remote code execution on your host machine through social engineering. And I need to change the scene here because that is a really cool, I don't wanna say cool, that's a very powerful technique or a very unique technique that you don't often see in phishing scenarios. So I'm so glad I caught this while it's still live. And let's see how it's doing that, right? So let's see what is actually on our clipboard. So I open up the source code of the web page because I'm assuming there's some sort of embedded JavaScript or some sort of linked JavaScript that is actually copying something over to our clipboard that we're gonna then paste into our start menu or a run menu and actually execute. So we might see some commands. 
Um, and the reason why I think it's JavaScript is because that's the only real way on the front end to interact with your clipboard um, through the browser APIs, right? You can't really do that through vanilla HTML or whatever. You'll have to be running some JavaScript, which we can see here between these script tags. Oh, and there we go. Oh my gosh, look at this. Okay, so basic kind of boilerplate JavaScript here. It's just setting some variables for the different buttons and it's basically selecting these elements on the screen. But if we look into the capture text, it looks like this is what's gonna be sent to our clipboard. And if we scroll through this, but what are we gonna run in our command line or our run menu if we copy this? Well, we're gonna run the PowerShell executable, right? We're gonna set it into hidden mode so we're not actually gonna see the, power the PowerShell window open up when you run the command. Very scary, obfuscation attempt there or uh, obscurity kind of thing. And then we're actually gonna be running a command. And then we have IEX here. And this is just a short form of invoke expression. And this is scary because this is essentially just executing or evaluating whatever we give it, right? And in this case, if we look into what we're giving it, well, it's IWR or invoke web request, right? And so this is kind of like running wget or running curl and, and making a request to a web server or a file, right? Well, we're basically piping whatever we return from this request, this web request, and sort of piping it into our invoke expression and running whatever we get, right? So it's kind of like piping something to shell or bash, um, Kind of like if you watch my previous video where I set up a fork bomb on the web, well, we made a wget request or a curl request, can't remember, but we basically just piped in whatever results we were getting into the command line to actually execute it. And so it's a similar technique here where whatever is being hosted on this page, whatever commands, whatever, you know, things here is just going to get piped into invoke expression and run on our host machine. And so this is what's really interesting to me now. I want to see what's on this page. I'm going to copy this and see what else we have here. Uh, looks like just some some fake recapture verification stuff to sort of fool us even more. And then other than that, just basically pretty boilerplate stuff here. So I'm going to look at the source of this uh, URL here. So GitHub scanner slash download dot text. There we go. This is our malicious PowerShell that we're going to be running if we fall for this scam, right? So let's make sense of this. So we're making a web request again. In this case, to githubscanner.com slash l6e.exe. Um, you know, we're just setting some variables for file pass. Uh, we're saving it to a file under the temp directory called sysetup.exe. So whatever this executable is, oh my gosh, this is, this is perfect, right? <laughs> um, we're downloading the file and then, yeah, we're starting the process. We're executing whatever we save here under slash temp slash sysetup.exe. So these are indicators of compromise, right? Everything is coming together. And so if we were to execute this in, uh, you know, hybrid analysis or, you know, any kind of dynamic analysis software, this is going to be one of our indicators of compromise, right? We're going to write a file to disk called sysetup.exe. This file is going to be hosted on this indicator of compromise here from this web server, specifically this URL, l6e.exe. And so, you know what, I'm in a, I'm in a virtual environment, I'm running Linux. Uh, let's see what this file is, right? And so what I can do is uh, open up a terminal, right? And from here, I'm just gonna wget that URL. So let me make a directory so I don't forget about this. I'm just gonna call it malware, go into malware. And so now I'm just gonna simply wget whatever that URL is and see what we download, right? So we've downloaded the malware. In this case, if we actually ran the command, again, it would save it on our Windows machine under slash temp slash sysetup.exe. So this is what they're trying to um, trick us into doing. And so now we have this file, right? And, you know, we could potentially look into it. The easiest thing we can do from this scenario, we don't have to get too in depth, is I'm just going to run uh, SHA 256 sum on this file and see what hash we get, right? And so from here, again, I'm going to open up Virus Total. The Swiss Army Knife for any security or SOC analyst. We're going to paste in that hash value and see what we get. Probably some red. Yeah, there we go. So we can see at least like half of the vendors here flag this as malicious, right? And if we look at the tags, uh, we can see, you know, some gen cryptic, um, some malware. Um, we could probably, if we really wanted to figure out what actual variant this is just from virus total. Um, but let's look at some of the details, right? So we can get the different hash values again, more indicators of compromise. So, um, if we were in the SOC, we would be documenting these IOCs or these indicators of compromise. Uh, we can look at Things like, uh, what else do we have here? Like the magic bytes. So again, this is an executable or a PE32 executable. 
And as we scroll down, we can see different file names that were associated with this file, right? So again, look at that. We have sys setup. We have other things like, uh, where do we go? Git scanner.virus. Possibly someone else investigating this, to be honest. I don't know why you would ever save something as .virus unless you're analyzing it. Um, but again, yeah, we have these different indicators of compromise, once again. Um, if we really want to look at the different signature information, we can see uh, the, the product, the author, uh, potentially. Of course, any of this can be spoofed. Uh, but we see WinTerror downloaded impressment. Impress, impressment. <laughs> Interesting. We can see certificate information um, and then just a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, we can look at strings too. We can also do that in the command line. So if I just run strings against L6E, just some, you know, the most basic static malware analysis we can do. Uh, not my forte, but it is very interesting to me. And so let's pipe this over to something like less. And there we can see the MZ header here or the magic bytes indicating that uh, this is an executable file or a portable executable 32 in, in, in the sense that this program cannot be run in DOS mode. And so you'll see this string basically in any executable that you come across. Um, getting a bunch of, a uh, whole lot of nothing here. So let me just scroll through, see if we can get anything like comments embedded into the file potentially, or usage information, if it's like a utility or something like that. Uh, in this case, it seems to be, oh, maybe not. Uh, we get some certificate information, that's fine. Uh, that's pretty standard. But let's see if we can find anything interesting here. We can see different DLLs being imported, um, but I'm not seeing anything too uh, attrib attributing, uh, aside from maybe this here, this is probably from the, uh, the metadata or whatever. Um, see some .NET information, some more DLLs, and then the certificate information. So if we look under the community tab, we're probably going to see a bunch of different scans on this file. We can see it is on VX Underground, so there you go. This is in fact malware. Um, if we run it, we can see some potential IOCs in terms of command and control servers that were being, uh, uh, um, you know, requested as the malware executed. Uh, we're getting some Luma tags here, so potentially this is just uh, as part of the Luma malware family or the uh, Luma command and control. <laughs> we can see someone did some some more analysis themselves here, so we can see they're spamming issues. Yeah, there we go. So that's exactly what we ran into. They're linking to GitHub scanner after clicking through the warning. Um, yeah, shows a fake capture, which instructs it. Yeah, this is all what we basically found out there within seconds, right? Yep, there's the command. So again, something else we could look out for as an indicator of compromise. Power uh, the PowerShell script downloads this. Uh, so yeah, so there we go. L6E.exe. So Luma Stealer, there we go. So we didn't need to go into too much depth there, but that investigation went longer than I thought. Um, that was very cool. Um, it's not, again, it's not every day you get to actually interact with something like this, as long as you're in a secure sandbox, right? Um, I expect this website or this domain will be taken down fairly shortly. Uh, GitHub seems to have some stuff in place that already took the website down, or sorry, the user account down that was spamming, but you just make another account, right? It's not foolproof. And so the main reason why I thought to record this is because this email that I got, let me pull it up again. The email that I got landed in my mailbox, right? It wasn't uh, it wasn't identified as spam because it came from GitHub, right? It passed all the checks. So this is something I like to reiterate in my SOC 101 course is that even if we, you know, pass all these checks, it's not a foolproof, it's not a silver bullet, right? Because it, adversaries can stand up, look like domains that pass all the checks, uh, or they can abuse legitimate services like GitHub to get malware and phishing into our mailbox, right? And so... Yeah, that was, that was really cool. I'm glad we did that. And I hope you learned something or I hope you at least found it entertaining. Um, it's, it's hard to make blue team stuff entertaining. I know John Hammond does a really good job at it, but um, sometimes it can be boring, right? So when we find cool, interesting stuff like this that we can really dive into and, and actually come up with conclusions rather than ask more questions, um, it can be really cool, right? So this is, this is, this is why I love uh, doing investigations. And so Again, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's probably going to be my first video in a while. I've been doing most mostly streams over at TCM uh, in different shorts or videos or whatever. So that's where I've been mostly working on certifications and and um, uh, training over at TCM, which is a dream job. And so I'm so glad I get to do that. But now that I have a nice setup and 
you know, some more comfort talking from the camera. Um, probably going to be making some more videos. I say that every time, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm getting getting more excited about making this kind of investigation related content or log analysis, that kind of thing. So look out for that in the future. But uh, thank you for tuning in. And I hope to see you next time where maybe we'll get some more GitHub uh, related emails. So thank you again and take care.